Mark Mia, welcome to the Normandy. Oh, thanks. It's, it's nice to be back. Obviously, we're not on the Normandy. We're in London. Yes. Mark's actually uh, come to London. Uh, what brings you to the UK? Uh, I'm here for the uh, Improvathon, the 2012 London Improvathon, which is a 50-hour improv show that we do at Hoxton Hall in Shoreditch. And uh, it's basically a marathon improv show. Most of the actors do it without sleeping, including me. And that's your background, isn't it? You are an, an improviser, as we yes, say. Yes, yes. Uh, I've been uh, doing improv uh, basically so for as long as I've been acting. And uh, it's one of my favorite things to do, specifically the Improvathon. It's, uh, it's a bit like a vision quest and acid trip rolled into one. Sounds interesting. Yes. Is that something you learn or something that you just born with? You're very quick-witted. Uh, I'd say that improv is like anything else. It's a skill that you develop. And uh, some people have more you know, inherent talent than others when they show up. I don't think I did. I think I was uh, crap when I started. <laughs> and, and then you learn. Uh, and and uh, the Improvathon is actually a place where you do learn a lot uh, by, just by doing. Now gamers will know you probably most famously as the voice of Commander Shepard in, yes, in Mass yes. Effect. Yeah. You've been working with Bioware since Baldur's Gate. Yeah, Baldur's Gate 2 was my very first game with, uh, with them. And uh, actually in, in Baldur's Gate 2 I had a single line and it was in the final cutscene. So you had to play the entire game to see me as an evil cleric who was plotting. Do you remember the line? Uh, it was something along the lines of there is no need for concern. The fate of this fool is sealed. Yeah. And, and it all started from there? It all started from there, yeah. yeah. And uh, I think the, the fact that I was a nerd myself and Bioware was, of course, working on Dungeons and Dragons games at the time uh, helped me uh, because, you know, they were able to call me back and you know, say to me, uh, so this character is a 15th level paladin and I'd be able to go, oh, well, then he's lawful good and he probably <laughs> has a Holy Avenger by now and these are his abilities. And yeah, so that kind of shorthand, I think, uh, helped me out. Uh, so the, the next thing that they called me back for was uh, Baldur's Gate Throne of Ball, where I got to play Sirik, the god of murder. And I was thrilled at that because you know, Sirik is actually an established character in the Forgotten Realms and I'd read books about him in comics and so yeah, it was, uh, it was quite a thrill to get to do him and a collection of you know, orcs and hobgoblins and whatnot. Now looking at some of the stuff you've done, you do like your evil characters, so what's it like playing a hero such as Commander Shepard? Well, I'll be honest, I, I did not think that I was going to be Commander Shepard. I was uh, actually working for Bioware when I was asked to audition. Uh, I was uh, the actor who was brought in to develop all the sound sets for the various alien races. Uh, so I sort of determined the way that the aliens sound and what their bass sound is. Some of it's fairly obvious, like the Krogan will have deep guttural voices yeah. and things like that. Uh, and so this was in very early stages and I was just working from concept art. Uh, and uh, you know, so the Salarians, the, the Turians, what, what all of the, the bass sounds of the races would sound like. And I was developing a sound set for the actors who would be playing the various alien races. And during that process, uh, I was asked to audition for Commander Shepard. And I didn't think there was a hope in hell that I'd get it. Uh, I assumed, it was like, well, we all know that I'll end up doing a bunch of aliens and bad guys as I usually do. Uh, and so I was, I was thrilled to uh, be cast as Commander Shepard. And then how did you go about developing the voice? Because uh, obviously you do a lot of comedy. Mm -hmm. Commander Shepard's not the funniest of guys. Oh, he has, he has quite a dry sick. sense of humor, mm -hmm. especially as Renegade. I think uh, you know, that, can, that can come through. Uh, but yes, we, of course, we worked with uh, our directors uh, developing the voice and what it would sound like. The Commander Shepard voice isn't too far off from my own. And obviously they didn't want, just considering the amount of dialogue that you're going to be doing as Commander Shepard, they didn't want something that was too affected or too far from your natural voice. So there are times in Mass Effect when you're playing voice characters, you're actually talking to yourself. Uh, yes, because in addition to playing Commander Shepard, uh, I voice a number of the, the other characters. Uh, in fact, the entirety of the Vorcha and Hanar species, uh, including Blasto, the Hanar Spectre, and, uh, and various other random aliens here and there. Uh, Praza, the Quarian in uh, Mass Effect 2, he's in Tally's uh, loyalty mission where she comes back as a crew member. Uh, and, and, you know, so uh, random mercs and whatnot. But uh, uh, let's see, oh, uh, Niftu Kal, the biotic god Volus in, uh, in Mass Effect 2. So characters like that, like Blasto and Niftu Kal, I, I quite enjoy doing because, you know, coming from a comedy background, it's nice to do a little uh, comic relief now and then. So you've got quite a bit of variety in your voice. Uh, do you I also, guess. does it help? for you to pull a face to do different types of yeah, characters. Yeah, yeah, I'll be honest, when I'm doing the Vorcha, I'm usually like this in the booth. And then, yeah, Vorcha, of course, we had to sort of save till the end of the day uh, because they're they're a little hard on the throat and they're mostly just screeching and howling and things like that. One of the, one of the things that I did like uh, about the Vorcha particularly was uh, their line about, uh, You are sent a doctor! Which made me feel like I was playing a Doctor Who villain for a little bit. That was that was nice. Would you like to? I would. In there? Well, well, please get them on the horn and tell them I'm. Uh, tell them I'm finally willing to appear on Doctor Who. I'll put a good word in. Okay, good. They'll jump at the chance. Excellent. 
So Mass Effect 3 is done, but it's not quite done, is it? There are different things you're working on. I said yes. you've just been working on some of the uh, the DLC. Or yes, the... as a matter of fact. We haven't quite done all the DLC yet. There's, of course, just like Mass Effect 2, there was plenty of DLC. Yeah. I would assume the same uh, for Mass Effect 3. Uh, so I've just done a, a little bit of the DLC thus far. And uh, I'm not sure how much I can I can speak about uh, the contents of said DLC. Tell us about some of the comedy you do as well, because uh, if people search for your name online on YouTube, they will find some bits and bobs, uh, some yes, sketches yeah. of you in. Yes, I'm, uh, I'm involved in a number of shows in Canada. Yeah, uh, They still count, though, I think. I think of, so. Because of the internet. Yeah, they do. Uh, Canada, it, it's sort of America. Yeah, it's uh, America's hat, yeah. is how we like to think <laughs> of it. Uh, so I do a show on CBC Radio, which is you know, the Canadian equivalent of BBC. It's our, our public radio station. And uh, I do a national radio show called The Irrelevant Show, which is sketch comedy. And uh, we've been doing that for a number of years. Uh, I think we're looking at a new season coming up and uh, also a television sketch comedy show called Caution May Contain Nuts, uh, which is on APTN. Now also you do these Halloween shows where you dress yes. up as, uh, you've got the good guys and the bad guys, you usually play the villain. Yes, seems. often, often. Tell us about those. Uh, well, I, uh, I am a big fan of Halloween and actually it's my wedding anniversary as well. And so I, li I like to stage shows for Halloween and one of the things that I do is uh, with Rapid Fire Theatre, which is an improv company that I work with and uh, they're the local purveyors of theatre sports in Edmonton, uh, is our Halloween show in which we have theatre sports matches in full costume and in character and uh, lately we've been doing superheroes versus supervillains. So we've done both Marvel and DC, Justice League versus Legion of Doom, the Avengers versus the Masters of Evil. And uh, more recently, we did a, uh, a fantasy versus science fiction uh, uh, team. So that was uh, that was all quite fun. And do you have a, a website people can go to to find out more information? Uh, yes, they do. And I remember that one. It is uh, <laughs> www.improvathon.co.uk. Which do you prefer, the voice acting or the improvisation acting? Um, I mean, they're, they're just two different things. It's like, well, what do you like better, meat or potatoes? Uh, um, Difficult choice. Yeah, difficult yeah, choice. I'll have a yeah. shepherd's pie. It's got both. Yeah, you would like to have both if yeah. you could. Yeah. Uh, the advantage to voice acting is, of course, that you don't have to shave or wear pants. True. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Yeah, so you generally have to wear pants on stage, uh, depending on the show, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. One's yeah. in Soho here. Yeah. Sometimes you don't have to. Mm. True. Yeah. True. Uh, but uh, improv is, I would say, my first love. However, improv generally doesn't pay as well as voice acting. So there, you know, mm. there's, there's, there's positive ends to both of them. Yeah. Well, hopefully there's plenty more voice acting with Bioware and other people to come. Excellent. Now, I've got, some, uh, I've got some messages here that were sent in from uh, some loyal viewers. Mm. Um, so I'm just going to load up my Omni tool. Excellent. And uh, let's that see. That should be strapped to your wrist. It should be, I know, yeah. but I've got the, uh, the version one, which you never saw because it was made before Mass yes. Effect started. Okay, Richard Burley uh, says, yes. is there any way we can convince you to release a voice pack for sat-navs? That would rock. Oh, really? Well, well you know, I actually, at uh, conventions, I have recorded a large number of voicemails and, uh, Which and I outgoing messages. After we've done this interview. Of course, yes. Of course, yes, yeah, 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 exactly. But uh, SatNav would be great, wouldn't it? Commander Shepard so, yeah. saying, uh, turn left to avoid the Reapers. Although, I mean, you know, I'm not trying to talk myself out of a job or anything, but it, it would make most sense if it was Joker or, or Edie, really. That's true. Yeah. Yes. I yeah. could be in, in the background occasionally. Yelling orders. Yes. <laughs> okay, Adam Cook, who is your favorite romance option in the game and why? Well, I have to say that I did not show a lot of fidelity when I did my playthroughs of Mass Effect 1 and 2. I haven't, and I haven't done 3 yet. Mm. But on uh, the, the first game, uh, my Renegade romanced Ashley and my Paragon romanced Liara. Uh, of course, I had inside knowledge knowing that they would not be playable companion characters in 2, so I switched, I switched allegiances and my Renegade romanced Miranda and my Paragon went with uh, Tally. Greedy. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. But I, mean, I, I, I think that if you show fidelity, then Mass Effect 3 sort of plays out a little more, it's a little differently. So yeah, it does I don't know what, what my bed hopping is going to get me in Mass Effect 3 when I play through. Courtney Woods, what is your favorite Commander Shepard line? Any favorites out there? I should go. That's the one. That, that's the one that I said the most. It, uh, I think it's practically Shepard's catchphrase. Uh, and you know, both Jennifer and I had to say that or variants of it so many times it became a hilarious running gag with our sound technicians. And Don't go yet, we've still got some more questions. Yeah, I should go, I should go. Or, and actually, uh, at any point, if I needed to go to the bathroom, I would just stop in the middle of a line and say, I have to go. And they're wondering whether it's a line or whether you actually need to go to the It bathroom. would usually result in a lot of laughter. <laughs> and then I would go pee, and then I'd come back. Very good, no laughter there, hopefully. <laughs> um, Vicky Blake, one of the things that Shepard is known for is the ability of having a romance option with several of the characters in the Mass Effect series, as you did. Mm -hmm. uh, how hard is it to go into a booth and voice out those romantic interludes? 
Uh, well, I mean, it's just like any other sort of acting. It's like, uh, how difficult is it to go in a booth and pretend to be angry at someone who's not there? Yeah, because a lot yeah. of the time you're not actually with them apart from when nope. they play the line back to you for you to feed off. Yes, I mean, uh, because we were recording in three separate countries, uh, there, there was, and just the realities of trying to you know, coordinate actor schedules, we very seldom were in the same room. Uh, in, in fact, almost never. And, uh, you know, occasionally in the same building and someone else was having their session and then you'd go in and have your session. But uh, this new system that they brought in uh, called VEDA, which they had for uh, two and three, uh, was great because it did actually play back uh, any other recorded dialogue. And so if you were the last person to record a scene, you had everyone else and it was like, it was actually quite easy. You were just like sort of reacting to everyone else's uh, dialogue. Uh, if, uh, on the other hand, if you were the first person to record the scene, you sort of set the tone and everyone else was, was reacting to you. Which is why I got a director to help you out. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All good. Right, next one. What is your fondest memory? This is from uh, Mark Smith. What is your fondest memory of working on the Mass Effect games? Any lasting moments? Uh, well, there were a lot of great ones, but I do have to say it was a real pleasure getting to meet Martin Sheen in Los Angeles. Oh, I, actually, I got mm. to uh, sit on, in on his last uh, recording session as the Elusive Man. And uh, yeah, he was just a very, very nice guy, very, uh, very friendly and funny as well. Uh, as a matter of fact, during his session, during a, I think you would probably realize which part I'm talking about, a very dramatic scene for the elusive man, perhaps near the end of the game. Mm -hmm. uh, and in the middle of it, he just sort of like turned and looked through the glass at all of us watching and went, the horror, the horror. So I was thrilled that he quoted Apocalypse Now and it wasn't even his line, it was Randos. Oh, yeah. <laughs> my word. Another one from Mark Smith, which is yes. uh, quite a good question actually for, for everyone. If you could give an aspiring voice actor one piece of advice, what would it be? Uh, well, do what I did, get in on the ground floor with Bioware in 1999. So okay. you will need a time platform of some sort, uh, you know, chronal belt or you know something to, uh, to that effect. DeLorean. DeLorean. Yeah, that would work. That would work. Yeah. I, I, again, I'd like I'm I'm someone who sort of fell uh, fell into voice acting. Mm. I went I I went to an audition. They liked me. They kept hiring me. Uh, so I'm not sure if I've done all of the proper things you're supposed to do. Like uh, you know, I I didn't even have a demo until a few years ago. So yeah. You've also got quite a good deep, rich voice. I mean, oh, do, well, thank do, you. do you exercise it, or were you born that way? Mm, cigarettes and whiskey, I suppose. There's Such that. Everyone says smoke, but you know, it depends if you want to get like lung cancer. Or well, that's to have true. a good career doing that. Yeah, voice. you take the good with the bad. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I would say. I, you know something improv I would I would very much recommend improv just it, for any branch of acting because the lessons of improv can be applied to to any acting that you do and uh, and often it comes in quite handy with voice acting because a lot of the time you have no idea what the script is until you walk through the door of the studio uh, because of course of the secrecy and things like that uh, and so I'd say that improv does help you lift things off the page that you know when you're essentially doing cold read uh, being spontaneous kind of comes in handy. Well Mark it's been a pleasure talking to you thank you very thank you, much Matt. for your time. Before we go can mm -hmm. you just do some lines for us in your Commander Shepard voice? I should go. Great uh, can you do another one for us? No I, I have to go actually. Oh okay yeah. Well, see, see you later. Awkward.com.